Hey everyone, welcome to Charlotte's Best Nanny Agency Storytime. I'm Emily Miller and this is Raffi the Giraffe and we're here to sing a few songs for you and read a few stories and bring some joy to your morning. All right, is everybody ready? Okay, let's start with our opening song. We clap and sing hello, we clap and sing hello. With our friends at Storytime, we clap and sing hello. We're gonna stomp our feet, which you can't see for me, but you, I know you can stomp your feet. We stomp our feet and sing hello. We stomp our feet and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stomp our feet and sing hello. We stretch and sing hello. We stretch and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stretch and sing hello. All right, let's get started with our first book. This is an awesome book about giraffes, one of Raffi's favorites. It's called Giraffes Can't Dance. We're going to read it. You might not be able to see Raffi during this, but that's okay. So let's get started. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rocked and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons then teamed up for a splint, splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They are right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd been, who had seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hoofs had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. He, then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing, yes, I'm dancing. Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle, we must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. That was Giraffes Can't Dance. Our second book is a classic called I Am Sam I Am. So let's get started. This is by Dr. Seuss. 
Hello, my name is Sam I Am. I like to eat green eggs and ham. I like green eggs and ham a lot, but as you see, my friend does not. He will not eat them, he will not try. He just says, no, I don't know why. Green eggs and ham are really good, so I tried every trick I could. I asked if he would eat them here, I asked if he would eat them there. But he said no, he did not care. He would not eat them anywhere. Not in a car or with a goat. Not on a train or on a boat. Would you eat them in the sea? Would you eat them now with me? What happened next, can you guess? I did not stop until he said yes. He took the plate, he took a bite and then he said, these taste all right. I will eat them here with you. Would you like to try some too? Would you like to try green eggs and ham one day? Maybe your mom or dad or nanny can make you green eggs and ham one day. That would be awesome. So our last and final book is an awesome book by a local author and her name is Cheryl Corsione, and this was illustrated by Crystal Cordero. And this is called Meet Your Microbiome, Your Superheroes Within. This is an awesome book. Okay, let's get started. Sir, we're running low on fiber. That's the first thing Mike the microbe heard early Monday morning. How low is your stock? Did you tell Michelle? He asked, starting to panic. Mike and Michelle were the superheroes in charge of a place called the microbiome, and they were responsible for gazillions of the microbes that live in every single nook and cranny, even the eyeballs. Yes, sir, she's on it. She asked me to come get you. Mike, Michelle yelled when she saw him. It's an emergency. Calm down, Michelle. We're low on fiber. We've gotten through it before. No, Mike, this is different. This is bad. And that's when Mike saw the army of bad guys invading. Holy bad bacteria. Confusion spread across Mike's face. How did this happen? Junk food, Michelle said, putting on her cape. The kid has been eating junk food all weekend. Candy, soda, ice cream, and no fruit or vegetables. What about nuts or seeds, asked Mike. No, Mike, none of the good stuff. Mike's mouth dropped open. It was worse than he imagined, so he pressed the great big bright red alarm button to alert his army. It was time for a fight. Auga, 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 the alarm sounded, letting all the good guys know that they were under attack. We need fiber and we need nutrients so we can make nutrients and fight these bad guys before they get out of hand and start pooping toxins throughout the kid's body. Mike yelled over the sound of the alarm, get to the control panel. The control panel was located in the kid's guts. It's sort of like a second brain and can send messages to the whole body through an important nerve called the vagus nerve. Aha, Mike shouted, just as I suspected. A bad guy had taken over the control panel. He had been sending messages to the brain, telling the kid to eat more and more junk. So he and his bad guy game could get bigger and stronger. Kick his butt, Michelle, Mike shouted. It was a good thing Michelle normally got enough fiber and was still pretty strong to bite despite the low supply. Take that, she yelled to the bad guy as she blasted him with powerful super nutrient powers. Once that bad guy was out of the way, Mike took over the control panel. We need to tell the brain to get some nourishment from fruit, veggies, beans, nuts, and seeds. It's the only way we can stop the bad guys from calling their boss, the evil villain, inflammation. Hurry, Mike. 
Mike and Michelle were both terrified of the evil villain. Inflammation didn't care if you were a grown-up or a kid. Inflammation was dangerous and could make people very sick by creating all sorts of problems like heart disease, autoimmune disease, obesity, diabetes, depression, and even cancer. Fighting inflammation would mean that the kid could get sick and millions of their superhero army would die fighting to make the kid better. How is it going, Mike? Is the kid listening to us? Michelle began, began to pace around the room. Yes, the kid is eating healthy food right now. Our army superheroes, superpowers are getting stronger. They are fighting harder. I think we can win. Take that, bad guys. Take that inflammation. Mike and Michelle joined their army, blasting the bad guys with their superpowers. We won! Michelle and Mike gave each other a great big high five. We did it! He yelled into the loudspeaker, alerting the good guys that it was now safe. I wonder if the kid knows he was a superhero just like us today. Mike said he hung up his cape and put on his comfy slippers. It would make our job a lot easier if he did, Michelle replied. They both laughed and hoped that one day the kid would realize that he too was a superhero. Wasn't that an awesome book about how you can be a superhero by just eating healthy foods and putting healthy foods in your tummy? That is really cool. I hope you're able to be a superhero today by eating a healthy, yummy lunch. Okay. So we are going to finish with a goodbye song and it has some sign language and you have heard this before if you've watched our, one of our story times. So it goes like this. It goes, bye bye friends. Bye bye friends. Bye bye friends. It's time to say bye bye. Let's do it again. Bye bye friends. Bye bye friends. Bye bye friends. It's time to say bye bye. Bye everybody. Have a great day.